This man has a highly successful podcast called An Oral History of the Office, and now with full interviews from uh, from that pod, The Office Deep Dive with Brian Baumgartner is available now on iHeartRadio and wherever you get your podcasts with new episodes releasing every Tuesday featuring full-length interviews with folks like Steve Carell, John Krasinski, and more from behind the scenes of the hit TV show that you can also see right here on Peacock. Our friend Brian Baumgartner back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you doing, Brian? I'm great, Rich. How are you? I'm doing well. How's that golf game of yours? You know, I've been struggling a little bit, Rich, yes. but I guess that's golf, right? That is the beauty of golf. Now, seriously, are you one of those that won't say your handicap publicly because you want to make sure you don't give away candy you're not supposed to when you're actually playing with people? <laughs> what are, is that? Is, are you one of those players? No, I'm not Brian? that smart. I'm not that smart. <laughs> I, I, a lot of people they they want to keep that number up because maybe they play for something now right. and then, which yes. I'm not afraid to do. Yes. But I'm proud. I'm I'm, a, I'm in the single digits, but I've moved Damn. high single digits. I'm like an eight. So you're breaking what? So you're you're breaking eighty every time out right now. I'm what, trying. That's my goal. Is that I say the first number to be a seven. Okay. It's usually not. I'm usually like eighty one. What's the best yeah. track you've ever played? Brian, that you're proud of my to, favorite course. Yeah, that you've ever played. Your best, your favorite track. Uh, I love Shadow Creek in Vegas. Of course, I just I love Shadow Creek in Vegas. Um, I I've played, you know what, the, Augusta National and Pine Valley always switch back and forth to be the top course. I have not played Augusta. I have played Pine Valley. Yes, but I was not as good then as I am now, and it rained when I was there. Mm. So I didn't. I wasn't able to fully appreciate it. The best, I'm more just, the more best just part about up. Shadow Creek is that if anybody's fortunate enough to go play it in Las Vegas, it's just so you're on the Strip, you're in Vegas, it's totally Vegas, and then you go behind the, the gates there, and it's like, you know, there's – uh, indigenous creatures that are not indigenous to <laughs> yeah. Las Vegas, Nevada. It's, it's insane. It's like you're in the Carolinas. Yes, exactly. You're in the Carolinas, and then you see that. And then you see like I think they do, and I'm not just saying this. I think they do have like peacocks there. Like they literally do. You're like strolling around. There's birds that you're like, okay, I, I definitely am not seeing that tonight at the wind, you know. And it's <laughs> it's it is, it, and it, it took, that's my problem is I'm not focused enough. Like I'm looking at the birds and everything else and I should be locked in on the, on the golf. And that's just, I am not good when it comes to that, man. That's yeah, my problem. Well, I, me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't sound like There's it. There's a reason we do something else. I yeah. know. So let's talk about your pod. Congratulations on, on that. Just as if this just in the office is extremely popular. Uh, <laughs> have, have you learned anything about the show, the hit show that you were on uh, and has definitely come to uh, be so good for you in your life, I mean, and to you and with you. Uh, have, did you learn anything through this process? That yeah, you I mean, it really it really was, Rich, uh, started out as an exploration. Like, why is this show? And, and we were the top show, a scripted show on NBC for most of the time we were on, the, the latter two-thirds. Mm-hmm. But, like, why is this show exploded now? Like, why is it way bigger now? And, in fact, like, based on any metrics you can figure out, like, the most watched show in television today, and we haven't filmed anything in eight years. And it was really about that. And there was a lot. I mean, people's candidness with me, their, their time that they get. I sat down with most people for two to three hours and just, and just went through it. And people at this point were willing to go back through it. I think the biggest takeaway for me, because it's been a question, like, why are the kids so into it? Like, why are there 12 year olds coming up to me and saying all of these lines to me? Like how, why why is this happening? And we thought legit when the show was on, like this was something we talked about because the ratings struggled early on. Mm -hmm. And we were like, there was something like there are 200 million Americans who work in offices. Okay. So if like 10% of those or even 5% of those like watch our show, we're going to be okay. Like we'll be on the air for a while. And I think what we, we truly weren't thinking about were the similarities between an unreasonable boss who makes his employees do unreasonable things (laughs) 
sitting next to people you don't choose to sit next to uh, for year after year is so similar to an unreasonable teacher yeah. uh, making you do unreasonable things as students sitting next to the same group of people year after year. And the similarities between school and being stuck in school with people and being stuck in that office, it really resonates with with young people that, that's the biggest takeaway for me well i mean especially since brian baumgartner here on the rich eisen show you know your character dwight obviously the one that john krasinski played as well steve carrill um and and so much more ed helms when he was on as well it's just the childlike behavior i mean the pranks that were played the childlike behavior in an office setting is similar also to school when you know you're 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 trying to maintain a certain amount of decorum and you don't want to and that makes it a little bit more you know uh i guess divisive or something that you're getting away with something maybe that's what it is too because yeah and it's laugh well, out loud funny subversive. right yeah the show is subversive, subversive for, sure, is for sure yeah and so i i think that makes it kind of cool and um yeah but it, it i had i just had so much fun going back with people who, you know, I mean, everybody's grown up, you know, had kids, moved away. You know, John Krasinski, for example, you know, he lives across the country now. And, you know, just being able to get back together with people that now, you know, we used to spend 12 to 13 hours a day with. And now it's usually a text here and there and um, during fantasy football season or whatever. But it was so fun to go back and, and talk about that time. I've got Brian Baumgartner here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show, The Office Deep Dive with Brian Baumgartner podcast, available uh, on iHeartRadio, wherever you get your podcasts. New episodes releasing every Tuesday. There's also an oral history of The Office that you can check that one out as well. So when you say fantasy football, I know we've had this conversation before. I don't care because it's so fascinating to me. Who is in this Office Fantasy League that you're still doing? You said you haven't shot anything We're in eight years. Do- I think. I think yeah, I think we're like at year eighteen this year. We we still do it. I mean, and I told you this when when we started, we had a you know we were shooting, we were trying to actually work, make a television show. Our draft would last days, and we had <laughs> I tell the same story because it's true, a yellow legal pad that would get passed around the office as a prop or whatever. And when it was your turn to draft and maybe you were in the middle of a scene. So there was no clock on our draft. So it would literally last days. And if you got to, you know, it was my pick and I'd gone home for the day. Well, we pick it up the next morning or, and, and um, <laughs> that's where we started. We now, uh, well, especially this last year, we get together occasionally. We, we did it over zoom as a lot of people did this yes. last year yes. uh, during the pandemic. But uh, John Krasinski is uh, is in it. I'm going to miss people. There's 12 of us. Uh, actors, John Krasinski, uh, uh, Rain Wilson, yes. obviously, uh, myself. Um, and we've got writers, directors, uh, prop guy, uh, sound guy. I love it. Uh Stand in, is, yeah. Is so there a tr- we've been largely the same group? You got a trophy like that you you send to each other, or 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 a punishment for finishing last? Is that 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 type of a league that, as well? You know what? No, we never did that. But now I truly, in this second, just thought yeah. we should get a Dundee. We should have a dund a, a the, fantasy football Dundee. Yes, that we pass around. I just. You just helped me come up with this idea. I maybe love we'll it. Start that. Let's do it. That think yeah, that maybe uh, we'll start that. Absolutely. And um, I, I would actually help chronicle that damn thing. You know, because there's got to be some great smack talk that that goes on. So I know uh, Ran is a Seahawk and Krasinski's a Patriot, right? He's a Patriot fan. Yeah, that okay. is correct. And you're yeah. an Atlanta Falcon guy, um, as along with a little touch of the Packers, but. The Falcons, yes. uh, you you like the drafting of Pitts, or you thought maybe they should have gone in the direction of of finding the the next quarterback uh, while Matt Ryan is is still there? What'd you think of that one, Brian? Uh, I liked the pick actually. I thought he was, you know, what do they say? Best available player, Damn and straight. I think he's super interesting. And um, and you know, I think Maddie Maddie's still got some. Um, 
you know, I think he's got stuff still left in him. And uh, I, I, yeah, I, I like the pick, actually. Well, I mean, and he's definitely somebody that I would choose in a fantasy draft. That's for damn sure. Kyle Pitts. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would take him in an absolute heartbeat. Okay, so you got that going for you. And the fact that he's yeah. a, you're a Georgia Bulldog and he's a Florida Gator, that doesn't matter to you. Because that does bother me quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, does, I appreciate it that. It does bother me quite a bit, but okay. I. What are you going to do? I, I. I think he was the best. I think he was the best available player, and I think he changes their. He, he gives their offense a lot of flexibility. I mean, yeah. Okay, I've got Brian Baumgartner here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. Okay, um, I'd like to play celebrity true or false with you here on the show, where there's some uh, items that we have seen on. Uh, Various Wikipedias and things of that nature that I would love to have you uh, tell me are true or false, if you don't mind, Brian Baum. Baum okay. Okay, sure. here we go. Here, we even have animation. We'll dress it up. Go for it. Please hit hit the... Uh... Celebrity true or false. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> okay, here we go. First one, Brian Baumgartner. Uh, true or false, you along with your multiple other castmates, like, say, Jenna Fisher, Angela Kinsey, BJ Novak in particular... You were actually using your computers on the set of the office to do various things from surfing on MySpace to paying your actual bills in real life. Is that true or false? That is true. <laughs> yes. my, my, MySpace was the, uh, that was the social media of choice. And we created, we, we, I think I'm just supposed to say true or false, but I think no, it's interesting. Go. We were supposed, you know, the, the ratings were struck. We were struggling early on and we, to try to find fans, created uh, MySpace pages for our fictional characters. So it wasn't Brian Baumgartner. Kevin Malone had a MySpace page that he blogged as though he were Kevin Malone working in a paper company called Dunder Mifflin. <laughs> yes, that is true. So you're actually curating that, or some of the writers were helping you curate that? Or? No, that was that was all me. And, okay. and, and Jenna had one, Angela had one. Eventually, everyone was like, okay, this is silly. Uh, and they kind of gave it up and, and came through. I never actually broke the fourth wall, if you will. And I have a very interesting book, I think, okay. in my closet. I'm looking at my closet in my office right now. Okay. I have uh, stacked up in the back about five boxes because eventually when the show took off, I started getting requests for a picture, signed picture. Will you send me a picture? And I was like, well, how can I do that? Like, that's, I, yeah, I'm, I'm Kevin Malone. So I, I, I blogged, I wrote, and people keep asking me for pictures. I don't know why you want a picture of me signed, but if you send a signed picture of you, then I'll send you a signed picture of me. So I have boxes and boxes of people who played the game <laughs> and sent a signed picture of themselves to me. <laughs> and then... Then I broke the fourth wall. I, you know, I set up a Brian Baumgartner publicity oh, okay. shot or whatever. So at that point, I, I kind of gave it up. But I have all of these photos from people, um, some incredibly fun, um, yeah, in, in boxes in my office. So you actually were spending time during, because nothing's more boring sometimes than shooting it, uh, anything on TV because of the number of times that you've got to wait around and to actually work. So you were paying right. bills. People were paying bills. And with the the connection yeah, of this paying, computer, people people were paying bills. Well, and I I was an accountant, right? So I was like, well, these look like accountant papers, right? <laughs> these right. Are, they look like bills. So yes, I would pay. I would pay bills. Yes, I would uh, bring in bills. Next one, Brian Baumgartner. Uh, true or false? Um, that uh, you were once upon a time in uh, the great city of Pittsburgh, and somebody uh, bought you a bowl of chili for free <laughs> while you were sitting there. Is that true story? <laughs> that. that that is true as well. I mean, for me personally, yes. I, I just, I mean, the the art of pickup could not get any better than that. I was, I was, I was traveling. I was traveling. I was alone. I was sitting at a bar, and I had just finished food from the bartender. And I, I was just, I was, I don't know, I was on my phone or whatever. And the bartender went to put down food in front of me, and I just looked up and I was like, oh no, no, I, I already ate. And he looked at me like a. 50s movie and was like that's from the girl at the end of the bar and I looked down and it's a bowl of chili yeah. and waving at you like uh, hey nice I, to meet well, you well yeah I mean 
and I and, and I did go over. I was like, okay, I have to give it to you. Like that is that was it was very funny. That is next yeah. level, Brian. You do have to you do have to give the the nod to such a thing as well. Uh, did that spark? That is right. Did that spark anything? I have to follow up that it question. Not, no, there was no spark. No, no spark. There was no spark. But I did well. Yeah. I mean. It's she's the only time it's ever happened, and and that story has been told a number of times. Okay, now, very good. So it, it got my attention. Well, I appreciate you telling it one more time. Uh, last one for you, Brian. You attended the same high school as Ed Helms, and you graduated a year is, before him. Is that true? You've known Ed that long. That is true as well. Yes. No we, kidding. We did plays together. We did uh, we did we did plays in high school. Um, he's an incredible musician, as some of you may or may not know. Yes. Um, I, I am not. But yes, back then I pretended I pretended to sing or whatever. And yeah, our parents, uh, very close friends, still got together over the years um, in the same group of people. And we we were we, I mean, yeah, we were friends. We lost touch. You know, he moved to New York and sure. started working on the show called The Daily Show. And yes. um, I was doing theater at the time. And we kind of lost touch, as one does for a few years. And and it was. You know, I had seen him on The Daily Show, and but yeah, I was shooting a scene. I, I, so just imagine that. Think about someone that you went to high school with that you know and you were really good friends with, hadn't seen in a long time. Now you're shooting a television show for NBC mm. and literally looking. It was the like the little interviews. We called them the talking heads where we were talking to the camera, and I was delivering one to camera. It was rolling, and suddenly I looked left, and there's a high school classmate of mine standing there. Unbelievable. I was like, what in the what is going on? What? And then I stopped. I said, cut or whatever. and was like, Ed, what are you? Not even thinking, oh, he's an actor and maybe he's coming to work on the show. Yeah. I was like, what are you doing here, bro? Uh, but yes, that is true. That is amazing. And you say you're not a musician, so then you, you were not uh, playing the drums yourself on The Office, Brian? I mean, come on now. I, I learned over time. I did not play the drums. <laughs> Quick story about that that I think is funny if you know the character of Kevin. It is the most meta joke from the writers that one could imagine. <laughs> they made me the lead singer drummer of Scrantonicity, a police cover band, because <laughs> now some some of you musicians may understand this better than I could explain it, but the singing during a police songs is off of the beat from the drumming, right? So their joke was, their meta joke was, for me to be the lead singer and drummer of a police cover band, I would have to be a musical savant, able to sing off of the beat that I'm playing on the drums. That was that that was the meta joke. That's so then they made me do that for nine years. Fantastic. Uh, last one, celebrity true or false, Brian Baumgartner calling in to reveal all of his personal conversations with Aaron Rodgers that's going to reveal exactly what's going on between him and the Packers. Is that true or false? <laughs> Brian? Uh, oh, yeah. What do you want to know? Anything you want to know. <laughs> Any, anything you want to know. Everything. So, uh, let me just ask this. Have you called Aaron Rodgers to say what's going on? Has that at least happened for you? Um, I mean, I typically during the off season, I speak to him uh, on multiple occasions. Okay, and uh, so, but you haven't lifted the phone and say what what's uh, what's going on, man. That hasn't happened at all. Um, you don't have to tell me. During the off season, we we speak on on a number of occasions and occasionally play golf. I mean, look, Rich. Yes, man. It does, this does this doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure <laughs> the situation out, does it? <laughs> This <laughs> doesn't take a brain surgeon. Well, I mean, it does you, feel you go, you go, you go to the NFC Championship game in nineteen, and what is every, you included? I'm sure I didn't. I didn't pull the tape, mm -hmm. but everyone says eh, they just didn't have enough horses against San Francisco. Right, San Francisco, faster, deeper, stronger, better. We need some wide receivers. We need. Some Defensive player, you know, blah blah blah. You know, all your guys talking about what they need, and when you then have a number one draft pick, or, or I mean, of course they have a number one draft. When they have a first round draft pick, and you choose to trade up 
to draft a quarterback, which I don't think was a position of need at the time. <laughs> I might be wrong. Uh, and you don't communicate with your MVP that this is something you're going to do and explain why. It doesn't seem like it's like if they brought in a big balding guy to sit at the <laughs> desk across from me at the office. <laughs> and I was like, uh, what are we uh, yeah. guys, what, guys, what are we what are we doing here? Yeah, right. are we, are, what, am I am I under contract still? I mean, I, I told everybody I wanted to finish my career here at Dunder Mifflin. <laughs> right. I, I said that's what I wanted to do. Right. So, right. I, what, what are we doing? Yeah, I was saying just the other week that, you know, uh, I've got three kids, 12, 10, and 7, that the number of times that I will essentially tell them when they do something and I'm not particularly pleased about it and they don't like my reaction, I'm like, what do you think my reaction was going to be when you behaved in the manner that led to my reaction? That is, a, you know, that is similar to what you're saying. Like, what did you expect the reaction yeah. to be? So... That, that- Yes, I, and I don't. I, I, and look, this is this is this is this is from me. I mean, this is this is not. This is like there was. Well, there was probably one person more shocked, but it was almost no one more shocked than me watching the draft in what year? Twenty 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 yeah. twenty twenty when yeah. it happened. Um, I mean, it just doesn't. It anyway, and then all of the decisions that have been made after that to a person that had said, I want to retire a Packer. Um, all, all roads lead to that not happening. So I don't know why anyone is surprised about whatever's going on. Well, I, mean, I don't know what's going on. Well, I, I hate to no tell idea. you, I hate to tell you, there's another podcast on the office uh, interviewing people, uh, Brian, and um, it is by somebody who's apparently uh, very similar to you. <laughs> and um, that's just been announced, so I hate to tell you. Um, just call iHeartRadio and say, why didn't you get the call beforehand? I think that's what you should do, personally. <sighs> there you go, everybody. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the call, Brian. Congrats on all of the success talking about this. You have clearly tapped in further to uh, a fan base that cannot get enough of you and your storytelling, and congratulations on that. Let's, uh, let's do this again soon. Thanks so much, Rich. I really appreciate it. And let's golf sometime soon here, too. Okay? Absolutely. I would do it. Um, uh, I am free for such things now that the draft is behind us and all that good stuff. Thanks for the call. Excellent. All right, thanks. You bet. The Office Deep Dive with Brian Baumgartner podcast available now again. All episodes drop on Tuesday. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here. 